Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. So I'd like to welcome all the devotees. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I wanted to seek your good wishes and your blessings um, so that we can uh, go further into the fifth canto, chapters 18 and hopefully 19 as well. And uh, some beautiful prayers by um, the residents of Jambadweep and especially this uh, series of prayers by Prahlad Maharaj, which actually um, our young Riyanch recites uh, every day, every day mm -hmm. which uh, we will have a, a closer look at today. Um, I'd like to seek the blessings of Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada spent such hard work, uh, did, did such hard work and produced these glorious, uh, this glorious Bhagavatam. So we we're very fortunate to be able to um, at least have a, a little look at the Bhagavatam and try to, um, every time we read the Bhagavatam, we should be a little bit more into it. And hopefully this won't be the only time when we read the Bhagavatam, we'll be reading it again and again and again. Okay. Uh, yes, Nani Ben. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, the original Bhagavatam that uh, Srila Prabhupada translated form, it must have been quite ages old, wasn't it? Or it was there from the, from, from the days of his spiritual guru. Yeah, that's right. And I believe it, it was one of the old manuscripts, like, uh, you know, very delicate. And he had commentaries uh, also by Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and a couple of the other Acharyas, Sridhar Swami. Okay. So he was uh, translating, but he also had other Acharyas commentaries, which hmm. he, he would refer to, to, to do the translation. So the manuscripts were quite old. Yeah, yeah quite that's cool. correct. That's correct. And was there anything written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Was there anything in his? Uh, he only gave eight uh, sloks, the Shikshastakam. Yes. Uh, but he, he used to recite the Bhagavatam together with Gadadhar Pandit every day, every single day. And uh, they would spend, I think it was three hours every day reciting the Bhagavatam. And actually he would ask Gadadhar, please, uh, you recite, because the devotee uh, can explain the Bhagavatam even to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> and so, then those manuscripts is not available? No, no. I, oh, um, Maybe I'm not sure, but I, I, there is, there is something very, very old, which is kept in Jagannath Puri. Uh, and we, I came across it when uh, we were doing the research for one of the, one of the seminars. Uh, I'll see if I can dig it out. I can't remember which seminar it was now. Okay. But it, I'm not sure if it was the Bhagavatam, but it was one of the scriptures, which was very, very, very old. And it was kept very safely. And one devotee got access to it. He took some pictures and he sent it, sent the pictures. And we, we could, took a copy of that and put it in the presentation. Okay. I can't remember nice. which yeah. Thank you. And in fact, uh, the Canto Five, Prabhupada, he, he said to the devotees, I was praying very hard to my spiritual master to help me with Canto 5, because Canto 5 is such, especially with the chapters that we are, we've just done and we're going to do, are, are very challenging chapters. So, uh, oh. <laughs> no, thank you, Nariman. And thank you for your enthusiasm for uh, Bhagavatam. It's very, very good. Okay, so we can recite this verse. Aho bichitram bhagavan vichestitam gnanantam jano ayam hi mishana pasyati tyayanam asyat yari vikarma sevitum ihayatya putram pitram jichipasati Alas, how wonderful it is that the foolish materialist does not heed the great danger of impending death. He knows that death will surely come, yet he is nevertheless callous and neglectful. If his father dies, he wants to enjoy his father's property. If his son dies, he wants to enjoy his son's possessions as well. In either case, he, heed he heedlessly tries to enjoy material happiness with the acquired money. Very good. Um, so this is a very, very nice verse. 
we have to be very careful uh, how we live. Um, oh, okay. No, it's, it's fine. It's already done. Um, because if we're not if we're not careful, time will pass us by, and this thing called death, <laughs> the snake of death, will come, and uh, we have to be very careful, very careful indeed. Otherwise, um, material life will take us over, and before we know it, our life will be over, and it's too late. It's too late. So we have to be very mindful of the, of the great danger of impending death. Of course, we don't want to live negatively. We just need to be sober. <laughs> okay, beautiful prayers uh, are offered by the, to the Lord by the residents of Jambudweep. So, uh, Rianch, you are around, right? Because uh, I, I'd love you to chant today. Uh, okay, Prabhuji. Oh, good boy, good boy. Was that? Can I listen to it? Okay, okay. Uh, now, this is the prayers by offered to the Lord by the residents of Jambudweep. Jambudweep, if the word is remember, is one of the islands, the seven islands, and one of them is Jambudweep. And within Jambudweep is Bharat Wash. Uh, a, a section of of Jambudweep. Badrashvara worships Hayagriva. In Badrasha Varsh, Badrashvara uh, worships Hayagriva, the director of all religious principles. Hayagriva is an incarnation of the Lord, the horse incarnation. He glorifies him as the cause of all causes and the active principle in everything, although he's separate from everything. So this is the inconceivable nature of the Lord. Is cause of everything, but he's also separate from everything. Hard to describe, hard to understand that. But this is uh, what he explains in the Gita as well. He's just uh, echoed here again. At the end of the millennium, Hayagriva retrieves, retrieved the Vedas and returned them to Lord Brahma. This pastime takes place very, very often. <laughs> the demon takes the Vedas and Hayagriva rescues and returns them to Lord Brahma. So now there's a series of prayers. Uh, there's eight prayers spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. So he's in Harivarsh. Prahlad worships Nashingadev, praying that Nashingadev will enter our hearts and drive away our ignorance so we may be fearless in our struggles for existence in this material world. Prahlad prays that there may be good fortune throughout the universe. And that all envious people may be pacified by engaging in devotional service by always thinking of the Supreme Lord. He quickly, so he recommends uh, hearing the narrations of the Lord's powerful activities, which quickly cleanse the heart. All good qualities manifest in the body of unalloyed uh, devotee of the Lord. So what I was thinking today we could do is uh, I'd love if... Um, uh, Riyanch recites the Sanskrit, and the devotees, one by one, we can read uh, these eight um, sloks, so everybody can get a chance. The translations. The translation, yeah. And Riyanch can do the Sanskrit. He's our Sanskrit scholar. So, Riyanch. Yes, Prabhuji. Do the first verse here, please. Okay, Prabhuji. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste, just say, Ave, Ave, Baba, Vajranaka, Retra, Ramsta, Karma, Shayan, Rande, Rande, Tamu, Grasa, Grasa, Own Swaha, Abayam, Abayam, Atmani, Bushta, Own Strom. Very, very nice. Thank you. So, um, yes, very good. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Narasimha Dev, the source of all power. O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, all oh possession of possess, possess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nails and teeth, just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for the fruited activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance, so that by your mercy we may become. Fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. Mm, such a nice prayer. Yeah. Destroy our desires. This is uh, when at the end, um, Riyans. Yeah. 
it comes from. Yes, that's right. It makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's good to it's good it's good he's doing these prayers and it's good also to know where these prayers come from. This is exactly where they come from, and what the prayers mean as well. So this is really we are very fortunate to have this boy with us. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah. But beautiful prayers. Uh, please destroy the ignorance in our hearts so we can become fearless in this world. Okay, uh, Riyadh, uh, next verse. Vastastu Vishwasya Kala Prasirata Jayantu Bhuta Nishivam Vitoriya Manashtra Vatram Vajatara Dokshaje Aveshatam No Matirapi Haituki Can I read please? Absolutely. Don't have to ask. Just go for it. <laughs> <coughs> May there be good fortune throughout the universe and may all envious persons be pacified. May all living entities become calm by practicing bhakti yoga. For by accepting devotional service, they will think of each other's welfare. Therefore, let us all engage in the service of the Supreme Transcendence, Lord Sri Krishna, and always remain absorbed in the thought of him. Mm. See the mood of Prahlad, he, he wants everybody to get on with each other. Those who are envious, he's saying, let them also practice bhakti yoga and cleanse their hearts. And let's think of each other's welfare. What a fantastic prayer. Yes, Riyanj. <laughs> Okay, I would like to read. Uh, yes. Uh, it's number 10. This one here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. My dear Lord, we pray that we may never feel attracted for the prison of family life consisting of home, wife, children, friends, bank balance, relatives, and so on. If we do have some attachment, let it be for devotees whose only dear friend is Krishna. A person who is actually self-realized and who has controlled his mind is, is perfectly satisfied with the bare necessities of life. He does not try to gratify his senses. Such a person quickly advances in Krishna consciousness, whereas others who are too attached to material things find advancement very difficult. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. So any attachment for this prison house of family life, we're going to come back. We're going to come back. So we have to somehow reduce this attachment and ultimately destroy it by being attached to Krishna. So, yes, Riyaj. Yet Sangalabdam Nijaviya Vaivavam Tivdam Mohosam Shushatahimasam Aratiaja Natashutibi Atongajam Oh, I in the same way, the more Can I read from Yeah, okay. sure, sure. By associating with persons for whom the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mukunda, is the all in all, one can hear of his powerful activities and soon come to understand them. The activities of Mukunda are so potent that simply by hearing of them, one immediately associates with the Lord. Mm. For a person who constantly and very eagerly hears narrations of the Lord's powerful activities, the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead in the form of sound vibrations, enters within his head, heart, and cleanses it of all contamination. On the other hand, Although bathing in the Ganges diminishes bodily contaminations and infections, this process and the process of visiting holy places can cleanse the heart only after a long time. Therefore, 
who is the sane man who will not associate with devotees to quickly perfect his life? Thank you. Jay, what amazing. Uh, Palad Maharaj is really giving such wonderful instructions. So yes, we can go to the Ganga, we can go to holy places, but if we can't, don't worry too much because simply by taking association with devotees, the Bhagavad book, simply by reading the Bhagavad you're taking direct association of Srila Prabhupada. What can be better than that? So associating with devotees, especially through reading the Bhagavad very, very powerful, completely cleansed. Don't need the Ganga, don't need to even go to holy places. That place already becomes a holy place. Okay, uh, Riyach. Yes, yes, the doctor, Bhagavad, the Kinchana, Sarve Gunasta, the Samas, the Sura, Hara, Octus, the Kuto, Mahakuna, Ratena, Satira, what over he? Minel, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I'm just cooking right now, so I'm listening. No problem, no problem. Thank you, thank you for... Uh, um, no, it's okay. <laughs> thank you for your comments about uh, Riyanchi's voice. <laughs> he's, uh, he's very, very good, yeah. Uh, Indu Lekha Maji? Hare Krishna. Would you like to read number 12? Yes, please. Um, translation, all the demigods and their exalted qualities such as religion, knowledge and renunciation become manifest in the body of one who has developed an alloy devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities has no good qualities, even if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or the honest endeavor of maintaining his family and relatives. He must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be any good qualities in such a man? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Prahlad Maharaj is really laying it down as well. If you don't do any bhakti, you've got no good qualities whatsoever. You may be a great materialist, but what's the big deal? Ooh. Okay, uh, Riyanj. Hare Sakshat Bhagavan Sharirinam Atma Jahasa Nami Bato Yamit Sitam Hitva Mansta Erizajate Grehe Paramahatam Vayasadam Patinam So Shalya, would you like to read? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Hare, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Just as aquatics always desire to remain in the vast mass of water, all conditioned living entities naturally desire to remain in the vast existence of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, if someone very great by material calculations fails to take shelter of the Supreme Soul, but instead becomes attached to material household life, his greatness is like that of a young, low-class couple. One who is too attached to material life loses all good spiritual qualities. Hare Krishna. Hare yeah, Krishna. Thank you. Uh, last one, Ariyanj. Tasma Rajora Gavisha Damanyo Manas Pruha Bayadanya de Molam Itwagraham Tang Sanskriti Chakravalam Narsim Hapadam Bajatat Koto Bayamiti. Very good. Uh, Sharmila, would you like to read? Uh, sorry. Therefore, O oh demons, give up the so-called, sorry, uh, so-called, 
Sorry, which one is it, Prabhu? We can keep that's changing. Yeah, keep okay. going. Yeah. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yeah. Give up the so-called happiness of family life and simply take shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nashim Hadev, which are the actual shelter of fearlessness. Entanglement in family life is the root cause of material attachment. In de fatigable desires, uh, that morosness, oh, yeah. anger, um, despair, fear, and the desire for false prestige, all of which result in the repetition of birth and death. Material life loses all good spiritual qualities. Thank you so much. So these prayers are fantastic, sir, uh, by uh, Pallad Maharaj. Really, really wonderful prayers. So it'll be fortunate to be able to recite those regularly. So then uh, the next part of the Bhagavatam chapter uh, talks about Lakshmi Devi. She worships Padumna in Ketumala, Varsh. She's accompanied by uh, Samvatsara's sons and daughters. Lakshmi prays to Lord Rishikesh, who is on, the only husband and provider of all necessities for all living beings. And she favors devotees. I think one of the verses in that chapter says that who is a husband? Only uh, Vishnu or Rishikesh, because he can destroy everybody's fear. So it's very interesting, this chapter, and how Lakshmi Devi prays and praises um, Lord Harikesh. Although Lakshmi Devi is always situated on the Lord's chest, has her insignia, insignia of golden streaks. So the Srivatsa, which is the golden streaks uh, on the chest of Lord Vishnu, uh, is, is actually signifying Lakshmi Devi. She thinks that this is merely a kind of false prestige for her <laughs> because the Lord's lotus palm is the actual source of all benediction and he very mercifully places his hand on the heads of his devotees mm -hmm. and not to her head. <laughs> so she's thinking she's being cheated actually <laughs> because she's on his chest, he doesn't touch her head but that devotee who touches the Lord's feet the Lord's hand blesses him. So she's thinking, um, this is just a false prestige. I'm sitting on the chest of the Lord, but actually the benefit is at the feet of the Lord. Who can understand the motives of the Lord? Manu worships Matsya. In uh, Ramyaka Varsh, Vaivasit uh, Muni, mm -hmm. Manu worships Lord uh, Ma Matsya as the origin of all life bodily strength, mental power, sensory ability. The Lord protected Manu at the end of the millennium. So if devotees remember, he comes as Matsya, as the fresh incarnation, and he rescues Manu from the floods. Uh, Aryam worships Kurma. In Hiranyamaya Varsh, Aryam worships Lord Kurma as the shelter of all things. Only a devotee can perceive his actual form. This entire cosmic manifestation is simply a temporary manifestation of the Lord's inconceivable energy, which expands in countless forms, such as living entities born from wombs, eggs, and perspiration, as trees, plants uh, that grow out of the earth, as all living entities. So as uh, Jivatma, we are considered to be part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, but we are uh, considered marginal energy, not uh, his internal energy. Bhumi worships Varaha. In Uttarakuru Varsh, Mara, uh, Mother Earth worships Lord Varaha as the enjoyer of all sacrifices. He is a super soul, he is the super soul in the background of everything. But by his glance, inert matter moves. He fought and killed Hiranyaksh and lifted Mother Earth on his tusks. So that's the end of chapter 18. Any questions, any comments? It's an amazing chapter, amazing prayers. 
Yes, Rianch. Pro Prabhuji, you told now only that in the Bhumi they worship Swaraha. She said that you are the enjoyer of all sacrifices. And it is stated in Bhagavad Gita also, Prabhuji, Bhuktaram Vikna Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Sukhrudam Sarva Bhutanam Nyantaram Shanti Ruchati. Well done. Thank you for that reference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good boy. You know that verse now? Yes, Prabhuji. Well done. Very good. Thank you for sharing that connection with the Bhag uh, Bhagavad Gita. Very important, actually. He is the enjoyer of uh, all sacrifices. And that's confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Good. So let's look at chapter 19. Okay. Satyam disati atitam atitonilam vevatadoyat punatitayataha swayamidate vajatam manichatam ichapitanam nijapadapalavam. The Supreme Personality of God has fulfilled the material desires of a devotee who approaches him with such motive, motives, but he does not bestow benedictions upon the devotee that will cause him to demand more benedictions <laughs> again. However, the Lord willingly gives the devotee shelter at his own lotus feet, even though such a person does not aspire for it, and that shelter satisfies all his desires. That is the Supreme Personality's special mercy. Well done. This is a phenomenal verse. And actually, thanks to you, Riyansh, we even got the right <laughs> meter for change. <laughs> so, um, this is the verse that explains, even if we have material desires, we shouldn't worry about not approaching the Lord. Always approach the Lord. Even if we want a Lamborghini, approach the Lord. Because what he will do, he doesn't bestow benedictions upon the devotee that will cause that devotee to demand more. And the beauty of the Lord is he, he will make the devotee take shelter at his lotus feet, even though the devotee doesn't want to do that. And that shelter will destroy all the desires. This is the special mercy of the Supreme Lord. So even if we want something, ask the Lord, because the Lord will, he will give it in such a way that we don't need more and we'll take shelter of the Lord. That's his special mercy. This is a phenomenal verse. A description of the islands of Jambudvip. So different islands of Jambudvip. Manu worship, Hanuman worships uh, Ram. In Kimpush Varsh, Hanuman worships Lord Ram as one who taught exemplary behavior of a king. Since Lord Ram, Sri Ramachandra is the supreme personality of Godhead, Vasudev, he is not attached to anything in this world. He's the most beloved super soul of all realized, self-realized souls and their very intimate friend, full of all opulences. <laughs> Therefore, Ramachandra could not possibly have suffered because of separation from his wife. One cannot establish a friendship with the Supreme Lord Ramachandra on the basis of material qualities such as one's birth in an aristocratic family, one's personal beauty, one's eloquence, one's sharp intelligence, or superior race or nation. Lord Ram accepted even monkeys as his friend because he accepts only devotion. This is such an amazing part of the Bhagavatam as well. Beautifully uh, spoken by Sukadev Goswami. So Lord Ramachandra was separated from his wife, but he is ultimately the greatest renunciate. But yet, 
he did not marry again and he um when sita was taken to the forest he could have married again but instead he um made a murti of sita because the the they were encouraging him to marry you need somebody by your side when you're doing the yagya to offer the samagri to uh, to the yagya so okay ramachandra said no problem he made a he made a murti of sita and the murti would sit with him so although he did not suffer from separation he is completely loyal and externally ramachandra did show that he suffered from separation from his wife but this was such an incredible pastime and this is such a wonderful just because we're not born in a high devotee family or we not perhaps got beautiful looks or wealth or intelligence lord does he overlooks everything only what he sees bhakti that's the only thing he sees so he's he can take he can make friendships even with the monkeys <laughs> because he sees the bhakti in those monkeys so this is very encouraging very encouraging for us we may be very fallen but uh if we take this through this process of bhakti then we become very dear to the lord narad worships narnarayan in bharatvarsh at patrikashram narad worships lord narayan who teaches his devotee religion knowledge pronunciation rena rena pronunciation <laughs> not pronunciation spiritual power sense control freedom from false ego narad prays for the power to execute bhakti yoga in order to control the restless mind and fix it upon the lord so this is the trick if we can somehow or other control our mind and make our mind a devotee of god then it's very easy to fix it upon the lotus feet of the supreme lord otherwise we will struggle life after life and this is narad muni worshiping narad narayan and this is patrikashram near the himalayas ah yes this is uh, fundamental after many births of pious activities one gets the opportunity to associate with the devotees of the lord in the human form in bharatwarsh and we are regarded to be living in bharatwarsh this whole earth, earth is considered to be bharatwarsh actually not just the track of land of india but everything is bharatwarsh all the demigods aspire for such a birth to perform bhakti to quickly attain perfection and go back to god it to achieve heaven what do we have to do perform very difficult task of executing vedic ritualistic sacrifices and if you get one mantra wrong it's all a waste of time undergo austerities observing vows giving charity right all these things are needed to be done just to got get to heaven such hard work but what is the value of this achievement because engaging in material it's it's just going to engage us in more material sense gratification and the demigods hardly remember in heaven hardly remember the lotus feet of narayan why because they are into sense enjoyment a devotee may worship the lord for material things ah oh, that's the worst we did but the lord instead gives him the shelter of his lotus feet which satisfies all his desires a short life in the land of bharatwarsh is preferable to a kalpa a day in of life of brahma which is 4.32 billion years so just a, a short life in in earth on earth is better than 4.32 billion years in brahmalok because although life in bharatwarsh is short 
one can elevate himself to full Krishna consciousness and achieve the highest perfection by fully surrendering onto the lotus feet of the Lord. A devotee may worship the Lord for material things. Oh, <laughs> study again. But instead, the Lord gives him shelter of his lotus feet. This is the Lord's special mercy. Bharat worships adjoining islands. When the son of, uh, sons of Maharaj Sagar were searching all over the world for their lost horse, they dug up the earth and created eight adjoining islands. So that's where chapter 19 ends. And then we're going to go into um, chapter 20, the, the other uh, islands, apart from Jambudip, the other six islands is next, chapter 20 onwards. So anybody, any questions on chapter 18 or 19? Mabuji? Yes, uh, Nariman. Yes, it is to go to the heaven when you list the three items. There is nothing much mentioned of the bhakti, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. That's it. I just have to study the Vedic ritualistic sacrifices. Yeah, that's right. Do we, do we still have pundits who do the Vedic uh, studies? I'm sure they are. Mm. Not but much. very few who know, I would say hardly any will know the actual process now. That's lost. Maybe in the south you get a few. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. In the south of Bharat. Yeah, maybe. But even even that, that art is, is in Treta Yuga that was very prominent. Yeah, because like, uh, you know, when we went to the... Um, Nashinga festival in Germany. Mm. The, the uh, Pujaris there who are actually doing all the Nashinga Homa and everything, mm. they were actually trained in the south uh, by the pundits there. They said, you know, that's where they get got the training to recite these mantras properly. So I would say in south of Bharat, you still get them, but nowhere else. But even if you do, mm. it's a waste of time because yeah. so what if we go to heaven? Big deal. We, we're still in this world. When uh, I remember when we were young, people used to say that he's a pure karma kandi, but we could yeah. not understand. Only now we have started to understand what it means. No, it really doesn't won't. mean much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like an insult. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, true. true. Thank I think you. we were brainwashed completely. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because he knew some great, nice mantras in a nice melody, and so what, you know, so big deal. So we go to heaven, we get a few million years in heaven, still in this world. But what it says about Bharatwash is so fundamental. We are so fortunate to have this human form of life in Bharatwash. Make the most of it. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, Lord Ram, he came to, to give us example by, his, um, by mm. his way of living. He gave us the example. Also, it is said that every time he would uh, do a um, yagya, every time he will make a um, deity of pure gold of Mother Sita. Because mm. he would say that once I have used this one, I'm not going to use it again. Okay. So it, he, he will keep it in the palace and make another one. That is his <laughs> example. He came, he came just to set example. Mm. How righteous he was as a king, as a son, as a brother, and um, as a husband also. So that, that was him. And uh, they're talking about uh, the, the Lord doesn't uh, see to our riches or to our beauty or to our knowledge. So we can compare to um, Gajendra, he was, he, he didn't go to any school, but yet the Lord came when he called. We can um, relate to Sudama, he was very poor, but the, the Lord um, helped him a lot, that the Lord was his best friend, as we can see. And uh, beauty, we can uh, relate to Kubja. How beautiful was Kubja, a hunchback lady? Right, so he does not see um, any of these things. Mm. He will see our bhakti only. Mm. And this in uh, Prahlad Maharaj somewhere he said, he said, I know only the Lord, he, he doesn't look at anything except for bhakti. Mm. 
Mm. And anytime we call him, it doesn't matter. We have done bhakti in our past life. In this life, we call him, he will come. He will remember that bhakti. He will not remember our opulence, our beauty, our um, wealth. He will just remember our bhakti. That's what Parad Maharaj says um, in the mm. Bhagavatam. Mm. Hare Great. Krishna, I just wanted to share this. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Anybody else? And you got the example of Sabri as well, who's mm. uh, again old uh, from a low, low uh, class as well, you know, and eating and then giving to the Lord as well. So, mm. yeah, he looked, uh, Lord Ram looks at the devotion. And you can contrast him with Krishna, you know, like uh, somebody asked uh, the other day, you know, uh, is, uh, is Krishna, what was the, what was the question, what was the wording? Uh, is he is he crooked or something? And we we were answering, yeah, Krishna's really crooked, you know. <laughs> if you compare him to Ram, you know, Ram stood straight. <laughs> Krishna never stood straight, right? He had this three, <laughs> three bending, bending form. <laughs> Krishna's uh, Ram, he would keep his word, um, and Krishna in, invariably never. broke his word. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in the battle of Bharat, ba ba he said, I won't pick up arms. And right in front of millions of people, he picked up arms to kill Bhishma. And then, uh, what was the other thing? He doesn't keep his word. He doesn't. So he doesn't spelling that, itself, that, Prabhuji, sorry? Krishna, Krishna itself, Krishna in the Ram, the spelling itself is so complicated. <laughs> for Krishna, <laughs> Ram is so simple. Yeah. It's the only ways to say it. <laughs> and yeah, that's another thing. He says one thing, he means something totally different. Yes, totally, exactly. exactly. That's why it's difficult to understand him. <laughs> and, uh, and the first time where he lifted the weapon on the battlefield, that was just to, to satisfy Bismadev. Yeah. Because Bismadev yeah. has vowed, I will make you do that. So yeah. just to keep yeah. his word, yeah. he picked but, the, he, And then he was enjoying the chivalrous um, um, rasa of Bismadev. Yeah. Because there was nobody else with whom yeah. he could fight. He wanted to, to fight yeah. with someone. That's what he was doing it. This is the uniqueness of Krishna. Mm -hmm. You break yeah. his own word. Yes, to keep the word of his him. devotees. Yeah. Well, no, to please the devotee. Like in Bhishma, he pleased him. Ramo. Yes. Him. yes. Who can do that? Ram won't do that. Krishna did it. But not just that. Krishna is willing to sacrifice himself for his devotee. Mm. Can you but give, this, also, can yes, somebody sorry, give an example? Somebody about give, what? Where Krishna sacrifices himself for his devotee. Anybody give us a, this example of that? Where does he sacrifice? Krishna Pitama, that's what he did. Lifted the uh, weapons for Bhishma. Prabhuji, cause of all causes. Yes, very true. But Bhishma, he, he just picked up the weapon. He didn't sacrifice himself. Where did he sacrifice himself for his for? His devotee. Uh, Prabhuji, when he, when uh, Gandhari cursed him. Oh, good one. Yes. Cursed his family. That's true. So he's willing to sacrifice his family. But where did he sacrifice himself? Arvind, that's a really good one. I'm going to add that to that list. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he can, he's his own beloved. He can, he is, he, he, he he's uh, happy to sacrifice as well. Because Gandhari's curse, that's right. But in one place, he sacrificed himself. Prabhu, is it when he took the vow to become, uh, to stay a Brahmachari? Or... Oh, that's Bhishma, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. What about Krishna? Where did he oh. sacrifice himself for the pleasure of his devotee? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> it, okay, now I'll give you a hint. It happens in the month of Damuda. Where I does think it, I know where Prabhu. He accepted to be tied. Huh? He accepted to be tied by Mother Yashoda. Yes. yes. He sacrificed himself. He's willing to let his devotee tie him up. Right? He's, he's given himself completely to his devotee. He sacrificed himself for his devotee. This is, this is Krishna. That's why he's unique. He's completely unique from all the other uh, avatars, incarnations. Also, I, Prabhu. I would say, oh, go on, carry on. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, also, Prabhu, you know, when Bhishma Pitame 
they were fighting in the battlefield krishna broke his vow that's right and he, and he took the thing to the wheel wheel yeah the wheel that's right he broke his yeah, vow right. yeah he sacrificed he broke his vow also for his devotee for his devotee this is the yeah. beauty of krishna he'll do yes. anything <laughs> he'll do anything for his devotee that's very rare only krishna is doing that yes Sorry, boy. I was just going to say he's a man of mystery or a mysterious man. He <laughs> does things and does things to mystify everybody. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Sorry, definitely. definitely. He's a great philosopher, Krishna. Yeah, great. of course. In uh, great yeah, philosopher, knowing, finding way, finding way out of any situation. That is his uniqueness, isn't it? Yeah. And in um, in the Bhagavad Gita, that's where he was very straightforward. He, that's where he he didn't uh, he didn't use his crookedness in the Bhagavad Gita. He was he gave it to Arjun as it is. That sums it, sums it up, doesn't it? That he is the supreme personality of Godhead, and he, <laughs> nobody can beat him up. <laughs> and that's why we. We so focused on Krishna. Many people ask, you know, and sometimes I mean I, I wouldn't like to give them that answer because they'll never understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Krishna's crooked and you like him so much. <laughs> but this is Krishna, he'll give himself completely, you know. To Radharani, he sacrifices himself completely. <laughs> Anything she wants, he's ready to do. Uh, does it mean that he plays all these roles to say, um, I can do anything and everything? So believe me, it is me who is the supreme mm. personality of God. And it's trying yeah. to prove a fact that, you know, yeah. you come may what, accept this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Why not? Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? Oh, oh we let's do the lessons. <laughs> Before I forget, uh, Indulekha Maji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Grandraj Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Lessons from Canto 5, Chapter 1. Due to the karmas, all living entities get different types of bodies for, for birth, death, and other activities, which cannot be avoided. Chapter 2, to avoid the trap of Maya, we must beware of the flowery and flattery words of others. Chapter 3, the Lord is so affectionate toward his devotees that he is satisfied even when <clears throat> they offer him a little water with a tulsi leaf. Chapter 4, whenever we perform sacrifices and offer prayers to the Lord, we need to do so through qualified brahmanas. Chapter 5. Uh, this human form of life is very rare. We must utilize it in the service of the Lord so that we can come out of the circle of birth and death. Chapter 6. To be spiritually fit, we need to take the position of the eternal servant of the Lord, which will help us to leave our material body easily. Chapter 7. To get detached from material bondage, one should share their property among their children as they grow old. Chapter 8. In their next life, and one acquires a body according to their thought at the time of death. Chapter 9, we can atone to reduce the effect of the sin, but we must seek forgiveness for an offense com committed towards someone. <clears throat> Chapter 10, an elevated soul always show compassion toward all living entities, thus trying to elevate others also. Chapter 11, it is very difficult to control the mind, but if one manages to do so, the mind becomes a best friend otherwise, it is the worst enemy. Chapter 12, we should never judge a person by their appearance because elevated souls do not like to exhibit saintly qualities. They are saintly qualities. Chapter 13, <laughs> when one takes shelter of the, devotees of the devotees of the Lord, they can easily get detached from material bondage. Chapter 14, the Lord is so uh, passionate toward his devotees that sometimes he takes away their material possession, thus favoring them to surrender unto him. Chapter 15, the householder should observe the rules and regulation of household life and perform sacrifices so that he can become uh, a good devotee of the Lord. 
chapter 16, if we want happiness in this life and want to prepare for the best in the next life, we must adopt the Vedic civilization. Chapter 17, if one take bath in the river Ganga, they become purified and develop devotional attitude towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. I, I think I sent uh, uh, 18 also. Uh, oh, did you? Because 18 is today though. We did 18 today. Oh, maybe I have done it in my book and thought oh, that I... Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. These next few, uh, next few are going to be a little hard to do, but anyway, <laughs> let's see what you come up with. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will try. Thank no, you. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Madhusandu. Hare Krishna. I'm sitting in the dark, actually, so I don't know. <laughs> Might not be able to see. It's not worth putting the camera on, is it? It's pointless. Uh, oh, but anyway, no, it's the, fine. yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Let there be light, <laughs> 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 and there's light. Yeah, it was really nice to you know today's session, especially mm -hmm. with Rians going through all the different mantras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know going through the meaning of these and. Uh, Nice to also the interactions, you know, with people asking questions and uh, sharing a few things like that. So it was nice listening to it, actually. Mm. But this part of the Bhagavatam where, you know, was talking about how the qualities, you know, the, so chapter 18, we did that, yeah. So we should note that uh, Jayadev Goswami's 10 prayers worshipping the incarnations of Lord Krishna, Keshava, um, contain his name in every stanza. For example, you know, Keshava, Drita, Narahari, Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare. We sing that in our singer prayers, you know. And it's a Keshava, Drita, Narahari, Rupa. You know, Keshava, Drita, Mina Sharira, Jaya Jagadish Hare. And the Keshavadrita, Vamana Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare. So these prayers were Jai Do, I mean, Jai Dev Goswami's lifetime is, uh, you know, his charitra, uh, his biography. And if you can read, it's just amazing personality, you know, because uh, there were, yeah. when he wrote all these different stanzas, some were completed by Krishna himself. Um, so, you know, it's amazing. And uh, chapter 19, is it chapter 19? In the Chaitanya Bhagavatam, it is said that, you know, uh, this... Oh, we've lost you. You, you muted, Prabhu? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, in, in the Kolavecha Sevakar was one of the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. So it is said in the Bhagavatam that Kolavecha Sevakar Dekha Bhagya Sima Brahmasya Kande Yara Dekhya Mahima Dane Jane Panditya Krishna Nahi Pai. She so said, done, Jan Pandit, Pandit, I mean, becoming a Pandit or having done doesn't uh, buy Krishna. I mean, you can't gain Krishna. Kevala Bhaktira Vasa Chaitanya Gosani. So we're being instructed, you know, that one cannot attain Krishna by any amount of wealth, following, or learning. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is only controlled by pure devotion. So we're taking example of that uh, college Sridhar, uh, who was a very sincere disciple of Lord Chaitanya, and how he, he was a very poor man. In his, you know, he only lived very simply and used half of his wealth for worshiping and uh, in seva, and used just the other half. But he, he lived very simple life, you know, with no material possessions. Um, but he became a very exalted devotee of the Lord. And it's just not that, you know, um, I, there are so many examples of devotees who may have had a lot of wealth. You know, we all desire, you know, we have 
try to have a lot of wealth and servants and in India it's possible to have a lot of servants and uh, fame and glory and all that. But there are examples. I was listening to a katha of some, um, I was reading about the biography of one particular king of uh, a small king, kingdom in Rajasthan uh, called Kishangad. And the kings of those, that place, Kishangad, is small, but they were very chivalrous. They were royal princesses and all that, but they were all very devoted to, uh, and devotees. So one of the princesses, um, he became a devotee, you know, he, he, from his birth, he was very detached. He had all the princely wealth and status and, and he, he did actually, after his father passed away, he did become the king as well. But even though as a king, he was so detached to everything, he preferred the company of the sadhus. He invited sadhus to his palace. He would do Bhagavatam kathas and he would uh, sing. And he also wrote so many dohas and, you know, glorifying Krishna. And, and um, But he actually took initiation as well from uh, some uh, a guru called Mohan Das, <laughs> his name is Mohan Das, of Nimbarka um, Sampradaya. But, you know, he was a king, you know, he, he followed, the, he, and then he was being attacked all the time by the Mughals and all that. But even though he would have to go and fight and all that, but in his heart and in his, he would always write and say things like, you know, he said, I would, I would rather wear the tulsi malas that the sadhus wear and I would rather have the chadar, you know, than these so pearls and diamonds and all that. And I, he was always attracted. You know, so I, he, he would rather wear simple shoes, torn chadars and walk around and he loved Vrindavan and so amazing. But, you know, some people are so much, so much wealth and the glory and everything. But even then, you know, they're, they know that happiness and true um, pleasure in their life is actually coming from bhakti, you know, to Krishna. So amazing anyway. Yeah. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you so much. Yes, very good. It's nice to hear about uh, devotees like that inspires us. Um, thank you very much. Uh, now we're nearly coming to an end uh, to the fifth canto. I think by Friday, we may have, by Friday, Thursday, I'm thinking we'll do three chapters tomorrow and then two chapters and then two chapters on Thursday. So we should finish by Thursday. Uh, we may need a day just to reconcile what the Bhagavatam says about the structure of the universe compared to what I suppose we perceive it as. Uh, but I'm not sure about that yet. But uh, I was thinking, Karuna, uh, do you think Chitra may be able to do uh, the questions um, on Friday? Or was that too early? Uh, maybe too early, Prabhu. Too early, yeah. That's fine. That's